Hello, I'm Katherine Martinez. Thanks for joining me as we go over some of the advanced features in Perfect Embroidery Pro software. You'll see how to create your own motif and embossed patterns and have them available in the drop-down menu. I consider this information to be for advanced users. Once I establish the technique, I'll move at a faster pace than I normally would if I were doing a video for beginning to intermediate users. If you are a beginner, by all means watch and see what you'll be able to do soon. And two, it's a video. You can back it up and rewatch as often as you would like. You'll see that I'm working with Windows 10 on a PC, not a Mac. Perfect Embroidery Pro software is Windows based only, as is all of the Inspiration software. Let's first review motifs to make sure you're comfortable with their use. The word motif simply means a reoccurring form or shape in a design. It is one unit that will be repeated across the area. As we look at our lady here in the hat, the blue area that outlines the hat is a motif. Also too, the hot pink candle wick is a motif design. We can have a motif be a fill inside a closed object or a line motif shown here on the hat. We'll go ahead and come into Perfect Embroidery Pro. I have a clean screen ready for us to go. We'll start with playing with some motifs. I'll go ahead and choose my artwork tool, the pen, and I'll draw a line, right click to end, go back up here and get my rectangle, draw a rectangle on screen. I'll come over here and select both right click, convert to, and for the moment I'm just going to do a run. Then I'll come back and select just the line. We'll come over here to properties and the type. Use the drop down arrow to choose motif. The default 100 pattern comes up. I'll go ahead and apply and you see that that motif is one unit repeated as many times as will fit on that line that I've drawn. We can also apply it to a shape Again, change type to motif. I'll go ahead and apply the default and we see that that is a motif added to a line. We also said that a motif can be a fill. I'll go ahead and do a right click, convert this to a complex fill, come over here, turn on my 3D so we can see it. Let's come over to properties and fill that with the exact same motif, 100. We'll do an apply and now you can see a motif applied to a filled object. We're going to play just a moment and take a look at the properties that we have for both of these. Just so I can refer to them easily, I'll go ahead and change the color of that filled object. We'll start with the motif on a line and here you see over in properties that we can change the pattern length and also play with the variable size. To start with, let's put in a pattern length and I'm going to put in a 6 which is double the default and you can see that yes, it does change the size of the motif. We have fewer units repeated because the larger the motif, the fewer that can fit in that line size. If we come here and play with variable size, I'll go ahead and use the drop down arrow, choose the first linear increasing and apply and you can see that the first one is smaller, the last one is larger. But let's come over here to the minimum and maximum percentages and really exaggerate what we have here. I'll put in a 25 for the minimum and I'm going to bump this all the way up to a 300 maximum so that you can see a little easier what that linear increasing does. Starts small and gives us increments up to the largest that we have set for our maximum. We can play with our other choices. The linear decreasing, of course, is going to start with the large and go to the small. If we do a convex, it's going to get smaller in the middle. And the concave, it will get larger in the middle and go back to small. Remember that this line, I have a bend in this line, so that is a little different look to that concave. We'll go ahead and put none and leave our straight line. If we select our filled object and come over to properties, we see that the properties are slightly different. Again, we have that pattern length and I can set that to be a six 
as we did with the line itself, you see the motif has increased in size. And instead of having a linear or convex concave, we have what's called dimensional. I'll put a check in that box and apply. And let's bring this back down to a three. I think it's easier for you to see at a smaller size. And here you have the 3D effect where we have smaller and on a curve. And I think that's very cool. It could look uh, very fun depending on the project that you're doing. But to me that sort of looks like a bracelet type of idea where you're seeing a circle go in the back. So each of the motifs, how they begin, determines the properties they have. A line or run versus a filled object. Let's come back over here to pattern. Use our drop down. There are 99 built-in motifs. And as we scroll down, we see many of them. Down towards the bottom, you also see a series of bean stitches as well as candle wicking. These were added in a recent update 9.04. We have some motifs that are plain, such as our 103. And then we have some that are very intricate. If we go back to 102. Again, we can play with the size. And if we take a look, just for fun, at number 118 and apply it, to me, that gives sort of a basket weave effect. And if we had this rectangle larger and a little bit more angled, we could see um, the look of that dimension. One of the other things that we have that we can play with, you see that your motif is a bit here on the slant. Let's go into our shape tool. Here we have our angle line. We can set that right at a 90 and apply. And that way we see a little bit more of that dimension getting smaller and a little bit curved. No matter how many motifs we are given, we always want more. And that's what this video is about, how to create our own. We'll go ahead and come into a new screen. We're going to turn the grid on. I don't normally use the grid, but in this instance, because I want my motifs a perfect shape, I am going to bring this up. To set your grid markings, come over into the ruler and right click. We can go into grid settings. You can see here that I have mine set at a quarter inch, 0.25 for both horizontal and vertical. You could set yours to the size that you prefer and whether or not you want that to snap to grid, uh, show as lines or dots, etc. I'll go ahead and do an OK. And in this first motif, I'm going to come up here and get the run stitch. Start here at my 0, 0 point. I'll click, come up two grids, over two grids, down two grids, and then again over two grids. Right click to end. Let's go ahead and turn on our 3D so that we can see that a little easier. And also I'm going to zoom in because what's important here is that my points are right on this line. This is a recurring motif and I want to make sure that my lines are straight and even. So we'll go ahead and take this first point here and I'll click and drag it and drop it right on that vertical line. That one looks good. This one down here needs to be brought up just a bit and I see a little bit of a slant going on. What I'm going to do here for my start and stop points, I'll do a right click on that point, ask it to edit just the outlines, then I can pick up that ending point and I can move this one over just a little bit. Come on over here to apply and now I have a nice, straight, even unit of a motif. Let's back out just a little bit and we can see it. I've drawn this on purpose in this way. We'll talk about that after we go ahead and save our motif and apply the line. To create the motif, it's really all about the saving. Let's come up here to File, come down to Save As, and here is the trick that you want to remember. Instead of giving the file name first, come down here to our Save as Type. Click on that bar and it is right up here, the motif pattern and MTP extension that we want to use. Click on that. 
we are automatically placed into the folder where all the other motifs are held. And just so you're comfortable, let's take a look at exactly where we are. You see the path. We've gone from C colon, Program Data, G7 Solutions, Perfect Embroidery Pro, Patterns, Motif. And this is where we are resting. We'll come now down to the file name. When I name any of the patterns that I create, to keep them separate from those that are built in, I always start my file name with a letter Z and a space. I've done this for years, and what it does, because I'm using Z, it'll always put it at the bottom of the list. I have a space, so it will come before any other items that are starting with a Z, perhaps. And then I go ahead and name my file. In this case, our motif name, I'm going to call it an open square. We'll go ahead and save, and that's all we need to do. Again, the trick is choosing the folder where it goes and saving it in the proper file format. Let's take a look and use our motif. I'll come up here to run, create just a line that we can apply our motif to, right click to end, select it, come over here to properties, use my standard drop down, go ahead and choose motif. I'll use the drop down for pattern, and here remember, we named ours starting with the letter Z. These are all numbered. Numbers come before letters, so my letter Z is going to be all the way at the bottom, and here it is, Z open square. I'll click on it, apply it, and there we have created our very first motif. I like to put that in red so you can see the difference. The blue is the original motif we saved, and here it is applied. And once again, the motif is one unit that is repeated across the length of line drawn. Here we have a unit, up, across, down, over. And then it repeats, up, across, down, over, and so forth. Let's pause a moment and make sure you're seeing the program data folder. To do that, let's go into our slide where I have set up uh, two screens for you depending on the operating system you have. We need to make sure that your Windows is set so that we can see any hidden files. The program data is a hidden folder uh, in the beginning. So once you go into your software and make sure that those are no longer hidden, you'll be able to see the path that we need. If you already see it, then you're all set. If you have Windows 10, you're going to go to the bottom of your screen and click on your yellow file folder, which is this PC. And once you click on that, you'll see this area at the top of your screen. You'll need to click on your View tab, and once you do, the items that you're interested in are over towards the right. It is the hidden items that we want to make sure we are viewing. So we, we want that check mark in there. And something else that's helpful for you is your file name extension. I always make sure that I have a check mark in that as well. And that guarantees that you see the MTPs, C2S, PES, Husk, whatever machine format you have. It allows you to see all of the extensions for all files. If you have Windows 7, you'll need to go into Windows Explorer. Click up at the top that says Organize. Use that drop down arrow. Come down to find Folder and Search Options. Click on that. It will bring you into this screen here where you will click on the View tab. And then right down here, you will want to make sure that the circle Show Hidden Files, Folders, and Drives is selected. And then just a few down from that, opposite from Windows 10, we want no check mark in the box that says Hide Extensions for known file types. So those are two things that you want to make sure are set on your computer. Once you do it, you don't have to worry about that again. Back into Perfect Embroidery Pro. This first motif was about the doing, about the technique, and you saw that it was very easy to do. Now let's talk more about why we did what we did. Motifs are going to connect so that this last point that we have right here is going to then connect to the first point that we have in the motif itself. 
we want to make sure that we have some kind of connecting line. If this is the look that you're after, you need to remember that. Something else that you want to strive for is that your starting point is on the same plane or horizontal line as your ending point. Let's take a look and see what happens if we do not keep this connecting line. We'll select this motif, do a copy, come to a new screen, do a paste. I'll turn on my 3D so we can see it and zoom in just a little bit more. We'll use our shape tool and I'm going to right click, ask to edit just the outlines so that I am able to do a right click and delete that point. I'll come over to apply and you see what we have here is the open square without that connecting line. Once again, let's do a file, save as. Again, what is important is that save as type. Click on that bar, come up to motif pattern. We are in our folder. We'll come down to our file name. I'm going to call it Z space open square down meaning to me that the open area is facing down. So here we have our second motif. We'll go ahead and choose Run, put up a line so that we can see it. Select it over in Properties, choose Motif, do our drop down arrow, and we're going to drag all the way to the bottom. And here you see Open Square Down. Let's go ahead and choose it and apply. And I'll go ahead and turn that to red and take a look what we have here. It looks like a blanket stitch. That might be what you want, or it might not. If you were after the look that we have here, more of a Grecian style motif, then we must have that connecting line so that they are separated. If we do not have it, you see that the unit is repeated. And what happens here is this is our unit up, across, down. And this is our ending point. So the next starting point is in the same position and goes up, across, down. That's what gives us this look of that connecting bar. But what is also happening is we have double stitch on these verticals. Remember it's going to go up, across, down. And go right up again, across, down up, across, down, and it continues in that fashion, and that's why we have this double stitch here. If this is the look you want, then it's very easy to create. Let's take another look at this particular motif. We're going to select it, copy it, new screen, paste, and this time come up to the flip vertical, and in essence, what we've done is simply reverse it or done a mirror image. This time the open is at the top. Let's go ahead and do our file, save as. Again, most importantly is our save as type. Clicking on that, we come up to motif pattern. I come back down to the file name. I'm going to name it Z space open square, but this time up. We'll go ahead and enter. Let's apply. This is always the fun part to see what we have. We'll go ahead and right click to in, select that, come over here to type, set it to motif, use our drop down arrow all the way towards the bottom, and here is our open square up. We'll apply it. I'll come down to change that to red. Let's zoom in just a little bit so you can see the difference. And here we have what looks like another blanket stitch, but with the bite of the stitch going up. Again, the repetition. We did not have any connecting line, so that's why this particular motif has no space in between the individual units. Now, something to think about when you are creating. Sometimes the motif does not uh, come in or apply as we expect it to. I have created a document. I'll go ahead and open it. I need to change to the folder where it resides. And we'll go ahead and turn on our view. 
I have this file done so that we can play and apply the motifs that we have just created. We'll go ahead and turn on the 3D. I'll get rid of my grid and I have the exact same shapes duplicated in blue and red so that we can see the differences. They're already set to run. We will select the blue objects, come over to our properties, drop down, set them to motif. Going to use the drop down arrow here to scroll all the way down and we'll apply our open square down to all of these objects. And you can see what happens when we apply them to shapes. They may or may not apply the way you thought that they would. What's interesting here is that our squares on our rectangle, remember these are the original shapes, we have an open area on the rectangle, but yet if we take a look at the round, we see that, first of all, that the teeth are biting outside the round rectangle as opposed to the first one where those stitches bite inside. With the circle, let's zoom in on this a bit so you can see what's going on. Again, this may or may not have applied as you anticipated. Remember we created this motif with straight stitches. It went up, across, down, repeated up, across, down. Because these are straight stitches and we are applying them to the arc of the circle, we are given small gaps in between and that's logically so, applying a straight line to an arc. Also, the points of the triangle are not created with the bite of our motif as well as the points of the diamond. Let's come and select the red items over to properties, drop down, motif, drop down arrow again all the way at the bottom and this time we will do the up and we apply and you can see the difference. Remember this is where the motif is pointing down which is what we're given on the original line. Here the reverse of the bite is on all of them. The bite is going to the outside. Very similar to when we reversed or used the rounded rectangle on the bite or the unit that is facing down. I just wanted to show you this. I think it's interesting and you need to be aware of the motif you create may or may not apply as anticipated and that's why we play and that's why once we save the motif that we certainly want to apply it in different situations to make sure that we have what we want. Again, let's take a closer look at this circle and again you can see that we are applying straight lines and in this case because the straight line is on the inner arc of the circle it has to overlap itself somewhat so we don't have the gap rather we have an overlap. If we take a look at the point of the triangle you can see that it continued to make those outside bites of that stitch and we're given a different look to the point of this triangle. Again, just an exercise so you can see what it is that you have created. Now let's increase the difficulty factor. We'll come up and get a clean screen. I'm going to turn on my grid and what we're going to do for our next motif is to create a letter. I'm going to use the letter K for my first name. I'll come up here to run and when we create a motif we do need that motif to be in a run stitch when we save it. So at this point I'll go ahead and using my grid click my first point and then I'm going to come up higher than I did on my other motifs. This time I'm coming up four grids and I'll click to set that point. When we create our motifs we need to remember that if we make the motif larger as we save it, it will come in larger as the default size. The size does not equate. It doesn't mean if we create this at one inch it will come in as one inch, but it will be taller than say our very first motif. My second point, I'll come down to the middle. Now envision the letter K, so I'm coming up to my point. I need to come back to the middle, down for the bottom point, and then because we do want some space between the letters of the motif, once again I'm going to come over for that connecting line to grids. I'll go ahead and click to end. 
as we look at this, you know that when I created, I went up and down, so I repeated the stitch over itself, up to the point, again repeated the stitch over, and then down. Another thing to remember when we create our motifs, they need to be a connecting line. All right, let's edit this K. I will select it. I think I'll turn it to red so it's a little easier for you to see. And we'll zoom in just a little bit more. Turn on our shape. Take this point and bring it down. Remember, I want this as straight as possible, so I'm editing my points. Something else to remember, we did this before. The trick, if we right click on that starting point, any point actually, and ask it to edit just the outlines, I then don't have to fool around with my stop and start red and green points. I simply can move those points as I'd like. Let's also zoom in close to the center points because I want these to be accurate as well. I'll click on one of those and drop it on the vertical and horizontal and I'll grab that and drop it on itself again. Come over here and do the apply. I can see one of my lines is off so I'll come up here to see if it's this top one. Scroll up a bit here and I think it's going to be off so let me click on that and drag placing it on the point and apply and then if we scroll back down I can see a little gap there still happening so I definitely want to move over my starting point so that it can be at the top and put that starting point back where it belongs. While I'm zoomed in so far I'll go ahead and take a peek at these straighten those up just a little bit and again if we do not go into the right click trick I simply can move the stop over move my point and then reset the stop and go ahead and apply that. We'll zoom out to take a look at our letter K it looks just the way I'd like it to be uh, once again it is a run stitch so if I turn on that 3D I can see it even better. We'll go ahead and zoom back out to a 400. We are ready to save this design as a motif. File, Save As. Remember the trick here is to come down to Save As Type, come up to Motif Pattern. It automatically puts me into that folder where I need to be. Let's come down to File Name, Z Space, and it is the letter K. Save that. We're back into our screen. Let's do a practice line here. And I'll just make it go that far. S select it. Change it to a motif. Use my drop down arrow and go all the way to the bottom. And there is my ZK. I'll apply it. And you see what we have. Very fun. Creating a motif specifically for someone, whether that be yourself or the recipient of your gift. Something that I'd like you to think about is, yes, we have created and saved this motif K. Down here on our design tab, you can see that the name of it is ZK and it, the format is an MTP. One of the things I also do, I'll come up to do a file and save as again, go to a specific folder in this case I'm just going to put it into our video folder that we're playing with here and I will actually save this design as a C2S itself and I might add the word motif so that I know what that file is. What that allows me to do is to come back later at any given time and either see how I created something or I could use that to add something else to it. All right, in this case, we are going to add, we're going to up the interesting factor just a little bit more. So let's select the K only, do a copy, go to a new screen, and paste. Here's my K, because I'd also like to add the letter A to give both of my initials. And this way, I can show you how you might want to deal with a letter that has an opening in it like an A, an R, a B, a P, something like that. 
Here's my K. I don't have to start all over. I am going to right click and convert it to artwork. Then I'll come up to my artwork tool and take my pen. I'm going to start the letter A right where the K ended. Start my point. I'll go up three grids and then I'm going to give it the point of the letter A. To keep it proportional, the K is two grids wide, so I'll come back and make this A two grids. But here is what I would probably do for that hole or that area in this letter A. I'm going to click once on the side, come over, and whether or not we click all the way over to the left line is your choice but I need to come back over on the same stitch, then come down, finish my letter A, and once again, I'm going to have that connecting letter. This time though, I'm going to purposely come across four grids to make that connecting line so that I have a bigger gap between the letters KA and the next group of KA. I have a two grid gap between the K and the A. I've sort of kept everything proportional. We do need to edit our points, so we'll zoom in on our letter A, choose our shape tool, and make sure that my points are where I want them to be. So I'll take each of those, and I'm going to select both of these points and drag them over to the line. Select that as well. Take a quick peek at my top, and I need to do a better job there. And now I come down and I see that yes, those all look nice. And a quick peek at my ending line, maybe down just a hair, and I like that. Let's zoom out. I now have two pieces of artwork on my screen. I have a red one and a blue one, which is the letter A that we've just added. I'll come over here and select all items, do a right click, and ask it to connect. Now I have created this as one unit. We'll do a right click, convert to run, and I will turn on the shapes making sure that I have a stop and a start. It is set to our standard. At this point, we'll go ahead and do a file, save as, Again, very important that I do the Save As Type first. Come up and choose Motif Pattern. I come back down to name it. I'm going to name it Z space K A. We'll come over here to do the save. And let's back out just a little bit more. This time we'll use a Run. Set my line so I can see what we have. Select it come over to Standard, Change to Motif, drop down arrow, drag all the way down. Here's my KA. I will do an Apply, and again, it comes in small. Not a worry. We simply come over to Pattern Length. Now this I'm going to really bump up to maybe a 10 so that I can see the letters themselves. And it's something to remember if you are doing a type of motif that needs to be a little taller. So in this case, a 10 Pattern length looks very good, and you can see again what fun that would be. Notice our proportion here with the connecting line between the K and A is smaller than the ending one that we did right here, which makes sense so that we have more visual area between our K, A, and it looks like those two are the group. So very fun. Let's try something else. We'll do a clean screen. This time we're going to play with the tool that we have and use for text, but this is the beauty of learning more about PEP and playing with it, is that you begin to see how a tool that's used for one instance can also be used for other instances. We'll click on File, come down to Import True Type Text. I will type in the letter K, A, what we were just using. I will use the Arial font. Go ahead and do an OK for that and I see the letter coming in. I will check the size. This is a half inch. I can go ahead and make that height. I'm going to make it a one inch. A little easier for us to play with as well as coming in larger as the motif. And in this case, we can use this to trace with to make sure that we have a connection and that we have this break 
in the letter A. We can't just make this a run stitch because then we will have jumps in each of our units when it goes to make this inner A. But we can again use it as a pattern. Let's zoom in. We'll go to a 400%. I am going to choose my artwork tool. I like to play with that uh, from the beginning and then convert to a run afterwards. I'm choosing the red color so you can see it. Now in this case you need to take a good look at your sequencing. How indeed do you want this to stitch out? We are trying for a continuous line and we also know that they have to connect to each other. To be on the safe side, I'm going to start my first point as a connecting line. I'll go ahead and click. And then in this case, I'm going to come all the way over to this edge of the K right here. I'm at that point. So that will be my second point. My third point is here. I'm going to come up to a number four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen. Now here I need to make a decision. So I've decided to come over to this letter, do my 15 point, and I'm going to come all the way up to the top of the A for point 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. I go down for 21, across for 22, back up to the top for 23, 24, 25, but I need one more as that crossbar for the leg, so that will be 26, and then I'm going to come out here and make my connecting line as 27, a right click to end. What I have for you to show you the points that I did is a slide giving you the numbers and how I did it. Remember, this is a video, so you can stop it here if you want to do a little bit more uh, paying attention to the sequencing I did for my points. One of the things when you look at this, please remember, I have not yet edited the points. And I did this on purpose so that you could see that here's my one, here's my two. In actuality, this two point needs to be right there. But I left it so that you could see it. That would be something you would want to go ahead and edit. And of course, then the 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14 brings us down. Then I have you come all the way over here to 15. Again, see this area right in here? I purposely put a little jog in that line so that you could see it but certainly we want that 14 to 15 to be a straight line. I did play with this a couple times to get the perfect sequence. So that's why I knew to come all the way up here to 16, 17, 18, and between 18 and 19, again, you would edit these points and make sure that those two points are on the leg of the A. I've left it this way so you can see how I did it, and then we would go over to 20, 21, 22, up to 23, 24, down to 25. Again, this little jog to see how I did it. You, of course, would make it connect right here, and then your ending point as well. Yes, we've upped the difficulty factor, but that's what this advanced class is all about, a little bit of a challenge. You can pay attention to what I've done here so that you understand perhaps how to do your own. And again, the reason why this became a bit intricate is because the letter A has a hole in it that we need to deal with on a continuous line. Let's go back to our screen and here into our KA. And at this point, I would need to zoom in and do some editing of my points. Let's make sure I have the red one selected with my points and I would take the time to, again, even up all of those points that we talked about. Here we have a situation. I'll bring that back up. And uh, going through my letters, making sure that everything is as it should be. I need to raise this point right here onto that bar, scoot up a little bit, make sure that I am on those points. I even 
want to come over a little straighter here. And again, uh, I won't spend all of the time to make this perfect as you would want to, but you certainly want to go through and edit all of your points so your letters are crisp and clean when we play. A couple other things I would have done, but we'll move on. So at this point, remember this is artwork, so I have to do a couple of things. First of all, I'm going to come over and select the blue, which was the original artwork from the True Type font. Hit my delete on my keyboard. I'm left with the red. Again, it is artwork, so we select it, right click, convert to run. I'll zoom out so you can see what we have when we turn on the 3D. So here is our motif. Once again, file, save as, change the type to a motif pattern, give it a name, Z space KA, open. We'll do a save, and as we apply it, I'll use my run, set us up here a line so that we can see our new motif, select it, change the standard to a motif, use the drop down for pattern all the way at the bottom. Here is my KA open and apply. Again, it's very small, so I could bump this to a 10. I'll even go to a 15. So you can see again, here is the motif that we have created and we could apply to a situation. Think about this. Remember our motifs are not only a line motif, but if we create a filled object, I'll go ahead and draw a rectangle, select it, right click, convert to complex fill, come over to our standard, change it to motif, drop down for our pattern, all the way down at the bottom, we'll do a KA open, and there we have very small, so we'll come and change that pattern to maybe a 10, and we apply, and again, we see how we can use this motif that we've created as a fill pattern as well. Something to think about, though, is would this be appropriate for a shape? Let me go ahead and convert that to a run and change my motif again to our KA, open and apply and size that larger and you would need to decide is this the look that you want going around your shape. Interesting how the corners were treated. It was just at that point that it needed to repeat the KA so it did so on a slant. Does it make any difference if we size it longer? No. Does it make a difference if we increase the height? Yes. So again, you have the options to create the motif and then play as you want it to look. If you are feeling very confident, you can do something like this. Let me go into my folder and bring up a C2S file that I have created for us. Whereas my name is Catherine, uh, family does call me Kate. So if we take a look at this, it happens to be that my initials are also the first two letters of my name. I went ahead and did Kate exactly as we just did the KA. Certainly if I had more time, I could have done Catherine, but this was to show you that you can do words as well. So if there is a word specific to your family or your friends, you can try and digitize that as a motif. Really, there is just no limit once you understand how you go about creating a motif. All right, let's try something else at this point. What if you feel that you can't draw? Earlier, we saw how we can use the True Type artwork to help us trace, and we can do the very same thing with our backdrop tool. We're going to go get a piece of artwork, but the first thing we want to remember is that we use artwork that is in the public domain and is copyright free. If you have been with me before, you know that these are two of the favorite sites that I use to make sure that I'm not taking someone else's work. I'll show you how this open clip art works. Let's go into the internet here and you can see that I have open clip art as one of the options on my bookmark bar. I'll go ahead and click that 
and my last search is still there. I'm going to type in sewing machine and you can see that I have played here before. We'll go ahead and search and as the options come up I like this purple one. If I went through the procedure I would select it and then scroll down. Notice that it gives me options for a big, medium, and small image. I'll go ahead and choose the medium. It is a PNG, which is a raster format. That is what we need for our backdrop tool. I do the download, and then I would complete it, making sure it goes into my proper folder. I've already done that, so we'll come into a clean screen, use our backdrop tool. It brings me into my folder, here is my sewing machine. I don't care about all of the detail that's here. We're really going to work with the shape. Remember, we're doing a motif. It's small. It will not show up on all of this detail. We'll start with going to get my pen. I've chosen not to use the wand. I'm going to control the draw. Here, knowing that it is a motif, I'm going to start a connection at the very beginning. I'm going to go to just about the middle and click, backtrack on myself, and then simply trace the artwork. I do not have to worry. If I'm not an artist, I can get appropriate artwork and then trace over with either my pen, you could use the wand. I'm going to ignore that detail. I am going to put something up here for the thread spool, and I'll simply click in that fashion and then I know that I want this to be larger than it is. The wheel, I'll go ahead and continue my drawing. I don't have to follow that little jog. I'm going to come back to almost the middle and once again I've chosen to leave it open at the bottom. You could close it if you want to. I'll click there and then finally I want that connecting point as my last point. Let's do some editing. Zoom in on this area first. I'll use my shape tool. I am going to drag these two points higher. I want that thread bar to look a little larger. I know that, again, this is small. I need to fix this area here. I didn't do a very good job. I could do a right click and make that a smooth point. I'll come down again here once again, I think I'm even going to exaggerate that even more. I'll select all of those points and drag that down to where I want it and take this point, straighten it up just a little bit. I could turn on my grid. Also, don't forget that you have these nice guidelines. I simply clicked within the ruler and drag that down so I can straighten up my point. I could also come over here and click on the side ruler and drag that over so that I've made a point here and drag that over. We could do as much cleanup on this design as necessary. Again, I'm going to maybe not spend as much time as I would if I was uh, serious about this particular motif, but I do want those straight lines here. So I will drag down one more ruler guideline for myself and make sure that this line is even and also any other lines, points that are on this line, they are important as well. And then let me go back to the center and check both of these, drag that down just a hair, and I know at least everything will be straight across the bottom. Let's zoom out and see what we have. We are working with the backdrop. We have two options to fade that design out. I could come over here and click back on the backdrop tool, come over to the properties area and use this adjustment and go almost to the end for lighter. And you see how it fades it out so I can see my line over the original drawing. Also, if at this point I want my guidelines gone so I better see the image, right click anywhere within the ruler and ask to remove the guidelines. You have another option over here on your toolbar is a backdrop toggle. I can click on that and the backdrop is off. Click it again, it's on and so forth. All right, for our purposes, I think this looks good. I am going to come back out to a 100% uh, 
and I'll check the size of my sewing machine. Now it's at three, that's large, but I'm going to leave it at that because I know that this would be something that has to be larger to be able to see it better and have it defined as what it is. So I'll go ahead and be happy with that three inches. At this point, we do need to come over to sequence view. Yes, it is artwork. Remember that's the other thing that it needs to be. We do a convert to run. Take a peek at it. Looks good. So let's do our file save as, down to save as type, up to motif. Let's give this a name. We'll call it Z space sew machine. Come over and do a save. This is always the fun part. Let's do a run line. Select it, turn it into a motif and go get our sewing machine. You can see that now all of our Z's are at the bottom and within our own Z group, they are alphabetized. Sewing machine is at the bottom. I'll go ahead and apply that. Very, very tiny. So here we definitely want to increase that. I'll try a 20. I might even want to go higher, but that looks kind of fun. Again, if you can't draw, remember that you can use your backdrop tool for that. I have another created for us. It's already started. Let me go ahead and open that file. I'll do a drop down to go to the folder that I want to use, and it is the scissors. So at this point, here are my scissors. I got this artwork from that exact same clip art URL. I know that they are copyright free and in the public domain, so I'm good. If I want to turn on my backdrop tool, I can bring in those scissors. This is the ones that I used, and you can see I traced around it. And I bring this up to show you how you would deal with inside circles. So let me toggle that clip art off, and let's do a zoom on this area down here, and you can see how I treated those inside circles. I simply came down, went across, did the whole circle, came back, and then made my connecting. You could decide if you wanted this little gap or you wanted them to be just a solid line by overlapping those points. Very much your choice. We'll go ahead and zoom out. We need to check to see the stitches in this. Did I leave this artwork? No, indeed it is a run. So at this point it would be ready to save. We can turn on our 3D if you want to see what it'll look like. Again, File, Save As type, motif pattern, I'm going to call it Z space scissors. It is the motif format and then let's back out here a little bit and give ourselves that run line so that we can see what that scissors will look like. Select, turn it to a motif, choose our pattern all the way at the end, our scissors. I know that this needs to be larger, so I'm going to go ahead and make that a 20 and apply. And once again, here is our motif, the scissors that you have traced. We don't need to know how to draw freehand. And sometimes when you are tracing, it's a little easier for you to envision the trick or two you might need to use in your technique so that you can get the look that you're after. All right, another fun one. At this point, I want to take you just a little bit out of our motif box. Again, this is an advanced video, so I feel comfortable in showing you something that is a little different than what we have been doing, that motif being connecting and one continuous line. At this point, I'm going to go up to Artwork and choose the heart, and I'll click and drag our heart to about that size. We'll come into Zoom and take a look at that heart, turn on our points, and what I'd like to do here, I'll right click on that point and ask it to split the line, I'll right click on this point and ask it to split the line. You can see that we now have two different parts to this heart. I'm going to select the lower and delete it. What I have done here is to create a heart that has an open area at the bottom not something that we have done thus far with our uh, other motifs. We did do our open box, and it's going to give us the same type of look, 
but because we have chosen the heart, it really is quite fun. So I do need to select it, right click, convert to run. Remember that's one of the things we have to have happen. At this point, we will do a file, save as. I need to change folders by choosing the motif. I'll call it Z space heart. Go ahead and save and then let's apply it. We'll do our run and I will put together a line. I'm going to change the color so we don't have any jump stitches going on. With it selected, come over here and turn it into a motif. Choose our pattern of the heart we have just created with our Z heart and apply and take a look at what we have. Okay, here I'll choose the original heart and drag it up so you can see it. That was our motif and it had an open bottom. Because we did not have any connecting line, remember the starting point is going to be at the ending point. So what it did, it created the first one and at this ending point it started the second one and see what unusual look you have when you are doing something like this. I actually stumbled on this accidentally and I found it very cool. So I did want to show it to you, again giving you other things to think about and how you might want to play um, just all by yourself and do this and save it and apply and see what you're given. I'm going to save this design, I'll call it File, Save As, I do want to go back to my folder, not the Motif folder. I have that on my hard drive into our video and I'm going to call this the sewing machine motif and I'm leaving it as a C2S. Remember I told you I do this so I can come back number one to see how I created it and number two you'll see another choice here that we have that's very fun in just a moment. I'll bring up a clean screen and we are now ready to play with emboss. We'll come down to our slides and take a look. Again, just to refresh, emboss means to raise a surface design in relief, cause something to bulge or protrude, and it gives a sculptured look to our embroidery. If we take a look at the inner parts of the hat, this is an embossed pattern, and in the inside of this band, that is also an embossed pattern. Embossing is used only for a fill pattern. It cannot be applied to a line. We come back into an empty screen. I'll come up here to complex fill. We know it has to be a fill. And let me just draw a couple of shapes here. Actually, I think I'll just draw the one, copy paste it, and move it to the side. Change the second one to red. We'll turn on the 3D so that we can see it. We'll choose blue, come over to our properties, and fill type set this time to emboss. We have 199 patterns that are built in to Perfect Embroidery Pro. There are so many of these that are fun. We'll go ahead and choose number 100 and apply it. And we see the look of that embossed pattern. Very fun. Something to point out, a difference between embossed and motif. Here with our emboss, we have a stitch length, not a pattern length. So if I were to put that up to a six and apply, I am not altering the size of that embossed pattern. I have increased the size of the stitch, which is not what I want to do here. So let me come up and do an undo. Put that back to the default of 3.5. Let's choose our red again to properties, emboss, drop down arrow, and I'm going to choose 101 and apply. And here is a difference with emboss. This one is larger. They are the same pattern, but the emboss pattern for the red, number 101, was created at a larger size than the blue. Something else that differs with the emboss. It needs to be at the size that you want it to be as the emboss pattern. We'll repeat that again as we begin to play. Let's go into a clean screen where we can create our embossed pattern. 
We're going to do an easy one to start with. Again, I'm not going to require that you can draw. We'll come up to our text designs on our screen, use the drop down arrow, and come to applique shapes. Here's a cute little butterfly. Double click it brings it to screen. Remember these are appliques. So the first thing I want to do is right click convert to artwork. Another difference from our motifs. Motifs need to be a run stitch. Our embossed pattern needs to be artwork. So here's our butterfly. We also need to remember that the size of this butterfly will be the size it shows up as the embossed pattern. We need to keep them very small. Anywhere from a 0.25, a 0.33, or a 0.5. And even with a 0.5, we need to be careful. We're going to set our butterfly height at a 0.25. And because the maintain aspect ratio is on, I have an evenly sized butterfly. Let's do an apply. He is very small. The two things that need to happen have been applied to our design here. He is artwork and he is small. So let's go up to File, Save As. We follow the same procedure. First thing we need to do is click in that Save As type, and this time we are coming up to the Emboss pattern. We'll take a look at that path with our drop down arrow. It is very similar. C colon, Program Data, G7 Solutions, Perfect Embroidery Pro, Patterns, Emboss. That is where we need to be. Let's name this design Z space. We're still following that same technique of naming our files, and I will call this an abbreviation of Butterfly. Save it. Here's the fun part. Let's apply. I'll do my complex fill button, and I'll simply draw in a regular shape I know turn on our 3D so we can see it, select it. I'll go ahead and turn it to red and I want to put it on this side. We'll come and do our fill type embossed, drop down arrow for pattern. Ours is all the way at the bottom, Z butterfly and apply and look what we have just done. We have created our own emboss pattern. Let me zoom in on this and show you what we have. Here is our butterfly. This was the original butterfly shape that we created in the size that we wanted it. Take a look. If I drag this over and place it right over an existing embossed area, it is the exact size that we created originally. Again, not hard, just things to think about. Let's do another clean screen. Once again, we go into Text Designs, Applique Shapes. There are so many shapes here for you to play with. First, until you get comfortable with the procedure, we're going to choose the base symbol, right click, convert to artwork. The second thing we need to do is come over here to our transform. I'm going to size the base as a 0.33. Go ahead and apply it. Again, it is small. We do our File, Save As, come down to our Save As Type, choose Emboss Pattern, name it Z Space Base, and we save it. Again, the fun part, we apply. We'll do some complex fill area here. Turn on our 3D, select it, make it red, come up to our Fill Type, emboss all the way down to the bottom for our base and go ahead and apply it. If I zoom in, we can see that the size that we created is indeed the size of the emboss or relief that is in that embroidery. Very fun and easy. All right, this time we'll do the same thing that we did before using our backdrop tool. And once again, I have gone to that Open Clip Art site and downloaded a toy balloon. We'll go ahead and use our backdrop tool. Here is that design. It comes to screen. 
This time I'm going to come up and use the pin with the magic wand. So I'll go ahead and turn that on. I'm going to come down and choose red just because that's the one that I like. And I am clicking within the black area of the balloon. One click. I'll go ahead and toggle my backdrop tool off and I see I have exactly what I want. It is in three pieces though. I have the inner lines and the outer line. So let me choose select. I need to come up here and break this apart. Now I can deal with the inner areas. That one is selected. I'll simply delete it and making sure that I have the center part of that balloon to delete. I now have the outline of this balloon. I know that it is artwork, but now let's come up to transform and size it. We're going to make this one a 0.5 and apply. A little larger in our balloon. It is already artwork. We do our file, save as, save as type is emboss. I'm going to name it Z space balloon. Do my save and let's apply it. Get my complex fill. Create a little area here with our design. Again, 3D select. I'll turn it to an opposite color and fill type becomes emboss. Our pattern all the way at the bottom. Turn the balloon and apply. And what we have here is a situation. Do you notice that the balloons, the width, the largest area, the width of the balloon ended up being a split satin? And that's because this balloon we made too large. Remember it's a 0.5 which caused the width of it to be longer than that satin stitch is comfortable doing. So here's something I did on purpose so that you can see when we play and when we apply, we can see if that is the look we're after. In this case, it isn't. I do not want that to be a split satin. We'll delete our sample. My balloon is still chosen. It's still artwork. The only thing I need to do is come back and make that balloon a 0.33 and go ahead and apply it. I'm going to save it with the same name, but just so you're comfortable with what I'm doing, a file, save as, Go back into our emboss. I'm going to name it Z space B A L L O O N, the exact same name I used before, and go ahead and save it and do a yes, I want to replace. Now, if we apply to a complex fill area, I need to select. I'll turn that to blue. Fill type is emboss. Go get our balloon that we just changed the size and apply. And you can see it does a much better job at smaller. I no longer have to deal with those split satins going across the balloon. So again, the purpose that we play and we apply to take a look and see if that is indeed what we want to do. We're going to continue. It's too much fun not to. Remember when we played with true type text? Click up here on File, come down to Import True Type Text. I'm going to type my name. I'll use the shortened version of it. Again, I'm using Arial. It's very plain and it works very well. Remember, true type text comes in as artwork. So here we have all of the artwork pieces. I'm going to select all of it. Come up here. I want to pay attention to the size. I'm not going to run the risk on that 0.5. I'll go ahead and do it a 0.25. Apply it. File. Save as type becomes embossed. The name of it is Z space Kate open. Save. We'll put up our sample area here. Turn on our 3D. Select it. I'll give it a different color. Over in properties we do the emboss. Go get our pattern all the way at the bottom the Kate open and apply and you can see what we have here and what fun this type of emboss is. I'm going to straighten out the points on that. I'll make it um, more of a 
square so you can see what we have. I'll apply and we take a look at that Kate and we can change the angle for that, make it a little straighter. But one of the things to take a look is the size. We have a little bit of area over here and the size of your complex fill shape will determine how much of that letter is in that area. So in this case, I wouldn't want that to start with the A. I might then need to increase the size, but then I get the E. So again, you see what we might have to do here is to play a little bit with the size of your shape to get the full-blown words. And if the actual word runs off the end, it's not as important because it's easier to read in this area. We also can add other things to our design. I'm going to delete that sample. We still have Kate on screen. If I go get that fun little heart and draw a heart that is similar, I'm going to come in here and do a little bit of switching up here for the heart. I want it the same height. I don't want it quite as wide to alleviate any of that split satin situation. So I'll zoom back out. That looks good. We'll come back to a 400%. Everything is artwork. It is still the same size. So here I'll do a file save as. We want to change the type to embossed. Name it Z spaced Kate Heart. Save it. Bring our sample up to screen. Try to do a little better. Square here, select it, turn that red, and maybe even size it just a little bit more so we can see repetition. Apply, ooh, that's too large. I don't want that to be quite as big. So we'll do the fill type to emboss, do a drop down all the way to the bottom. Here's our Kate Heart and apply. And you can see, I definitely want that a bigger square. Remember that the size we create the emboss will be the size that it appears in your shape. So if that's too big, I might need to come back and change all of that heart Kate to even a smaller height than the 2.5. Again, if I wanted to start with the heart, I can size that block and then I have the heart and my names and I could continue on the other side and so forth. If I select that whole unit and drag it over, I see embossing, whatever size we create it, is the size of the embossed pattern. We need to remember that point. We'll do one more. Do you remember when we saved the scissors? I'm going to go open that scissors. I need to go back to my appropriate folder. And here we have the scissors that we did as a motif. And in this case, I'm bringing those scissors back up again. Remember, an emboss needs to be artwork. So let's select that, right click, and convert it to artwork. The other thing with this is I don't want this connecting line. So let me do my shape and right click, delete that point, and the scissors now looks as I want it to look. Let's check the size of it. We'll come over here to transform. I'm going to make the height a 0.33 and apply it. Yes, we know it's small, but remember this is an emboss. File, save as, type, emboss pattern. I'm going to call it Z space scissors. Save, put up our little sample box here. d so we can change that to a blue come to emboss go get our scissors pattern at the bottom there it is alphabetically and we'll go ahead and apply and we see what fun we can have with our emboss zoom in just a little bit again the size of those scissors you may want to make those a little larger. If you do, certainly go right ahead. We could do the same thing with our sewing machine because we saved that as a C2S. So we bring it up and change it into artwork and make it smaller and save it as an embossed pattern. 
very much fun that you can have with your embossed patterns to make things a little bit more personal when you give them as gifts. You can see how easy it is to create your own motifs and embossed patterns. There are a few things for you to remember with both of them. I've presented this information for you in a chart. When we are creating a motif, it should be a continuous run stitch. Very important for it to be a run. We need to have a connecting line, preferably on the same horizontal line. Remember with this one, this was our connecting line and that's what allowed the spacing to occur. You know that you can fudge this particular suggestion, that if you do not have a connecting line, it gives you a totally different look. Remember the heart that we played with. The larger we create the motif, the larger it will be, and we do have the ability to resize. Finally, when you save it, you need to save as type as a motif pattern, which gives you an MTP extension. When we do emboss work, the emboss design must be artwork. Remember our butterfly? It needs to be small. I would not go any larger than a 0.5 and there are times you might need to go smaller than a 0.25. But as you saw in the video, I play with these three measurements. The size we create the emboss pattern is the size of the emboss pattern. So do remember what you created will be the size that it comes in. There is no resizing ability for our embossed pattern once it is applied. Finally, when you save it, it is saved as an embossed pattern and that extension is an EMP. One last thing for you to think about, these are your custom patterns. They are saved on the hard drive in the appropriate folder. As a review, this is where they go. Remember C colon program data, G7 solutions, perfect embroidery pro, patterns, and then the difference is whether you are in the motif or the emboss folder. You may wish to copy your custom patterns to some other storage media such as an external hard drive or USB drive so that you would have them if needed. We take a look at this last slide where we have our custom motifs and embossed patterns and we know that they are just plain fun. There are a few things for you to remember as you create them, but I know you can do it. Enjoy!